standing, I want to read Genesis 28, chapter 10. I'm on Genesis 28, verse 10. I'm sorry. I'm excited for today, fam. Are you excited to hear the word of God? I'm, a, I'm excited for this word today. Speaking of the name of Jesus, speaking of our heavenly father, hear this family, hear this. That even when your heavenly father created the heavens and the earth, he released his word in order for it to be created. So what I want to say to you right now, as we begin to shift into the sermon, there's something powerful about the words of Christ that he speaks over you daily. That when he spoke his words that heaven and earth was created, that everything had to come in order. Why? Because when the Father speaks, creation begins to happen. So whatever you don't see right now, whatever you don't have in your midst, just know your father is not finished speaking. And when the father is still on the throne and, and Christ is still in the throne and we have the Holy Spirit right beside us, all I'm sharing with you today that there's something powerful about the words that God has over you. That he's still speaking, that he's still talking, that he's still creating, that he's still moving and shifting things. As his word goes forth, creation has to obey. Hallelujah. Sorry, I'm a little excited today. But Genesis 28, verse 10, I'm going to read this. Mama, I'm going to let you sit down pretty soon, I promise, I promise. It says in verse 10, Jacob left Bathsheba, Bathsheba and went towards Haran. He reached a certain place, come on somebody, a certain place, and spent the night there because of the sun had set. He took one of the stones from the place, put it there at his head, and he laid down in that place. Verse 12, and he dreamed. A stairway was set on the ground with his tops reaching the sky, and God's angels were going up and down on it. The Lord was standing there beside him saying, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your offspring the land on which you are lying. Your offspring will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out towards the west, the east, the north, the south. All of the people on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. Look, I am with you, my God, and will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Look at these powerful words that God had for Jacob. That God was releasing his word so that now Jacob can see where God was getting ready to take him. What, what beauty in the words of God that God would give us some words so that we can see where our next step is getting ready to come from. Maybe you're in a season of your life right now where you don't know what your next look like. I'm here to, I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to come beside you and let you know today that God has some words for you. And his words are saying that you are overcomer. His words are saying that you are blessed. There's something powerful about the words of your God. Never underestimate the powerfulness of God's words. His words allows you to see. If I could take the next few minutes, I want to preach from this, this frame of thought, family. Sight words. Sight words. Father God, we love you, we honor you, we thank you for this moment. We thank you to, to be in your presence even right now. That your words gives us the vision to see. That your words increase our faith. Your words give us the strength to continue to walk this walk called life. It's through your words we get our endurance. It's through your words we get our strength. It's through your words our faith is increased. Thank you for always being there for us covering us, walking with us. It's nothing like your words. It's in Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen. You can go ahead and have your seats. 
I want to go ahead and dismiss C students right now. Sight words. Come on, somebody say it with me. Sight words. Come on, you're feeling like you're in a, you're feeling like that you're in a, a, a kid's class right now. There's, there's something phenomenal about sight words. Come on, somebody. Where all of my parents at in here? Come on, if you raised little ones already, there's something powerful about sight words. Matter of fact, Dr. William Douch created this list back in the 1930s. It was the list of common words that we refer to now as sight words. This is a list that preschoolers get, or if preschoolers get to it, to help them with their ability to read and learn. That through this list of common words, it's to help a preschooler so that they can react quicker when they are reading. The powerfulness of sight words that it actually gives the preschooler, the, the kid, their ability when they're reading to react quicker. Sight words. There are sight words. I, I love this when I was doing a little bit of study. And come on, anybody, anybody do some Googling and study? Come on, the research department on Google. Google says this family. Come on, I'm going to sound like I got a doctor degree in sight words here. How about this? It says that sight words for a preschooler, it helps them to build their confidence. Sight words actually helps a preschooler build a foundation to read. We're talking about sight words here. Sight words actually, it does this for the preschooler who's trying to learn how to read. And it actually gives them clues into the senses so they can actually, they can see it at a glance and just at a glance they can react without doing more effort or more studying based on the sight word. They have a clue in what's going on. See, I love how this list can actually help a preschooler read a little bit better. But when I was studying because I actually got, I actually can actually do some in-house study and I got a little Princeton, come on somebody. That a six-year-old Princeton is going through his sight words and, and where I got this, this material for this sermon because I was working with little Princeton and little Princeton was going through his sight words and I was saying, wow, Princeton, these words are helping you to read. Based on your study and your memorization, excuse me, it's helping you to react quicker to reading. I believe the same thing when it comes to our relationship with God, that God will give you some sight words. He will give you some sight words so that you can see where he's getting ready to take you. I believe each and every one that's in here right now and everybody that's online right now that God has given you some sight words. He has some sight words for your life so that you can see what God is getting ready to do, not in the future, but here it is today, family. He wants to give you some sight words of what he's getting ready to do in your now. That God has called you to be blessed right now. That God has called you to walk in the fullness of what he created you to be. He wants you to be the best version of what he called you to be. In order for that to happen, he will give you some sight words. So that you can see. I love it that it says in Isaiah 55. Come on, we love this scripture. Come on. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. And your ways are not my ways, says the Lord. In other words, his words about you, Leah, is actually higher than what you think about yourself. That the words that God has for you are actually higher than what you think about yourself. This is why we have to make sure we stay in a posture before our Lord because he has words so that we can look through the filter, through the lens that God sees us as. Not through the lens that the world sees us as, but look through the lens that God sees you as. So now when you need to be encouraged, you're looking through his lens and you're not looking through the lenses of this world. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, my gosh. His ways are higher than our ways. So when my thought process is being effective during the week, I always have to ask myself, what lens am I looking through? Am I looking through Anthony lens or am I looking through the lenses of God and what he's speaking about my life? He's always releasing words to you, my gosh. 
When you get in your quiet time with him, he's releasing words. When you get when you get in your one-on-one time with him, Marquise, he's speaking over you. He's releasing words. When you when you're feeling in disappointment, when you're feeling lonely, come on, somebody got to talk back to me in here. When you're going through, you're frustrated. You don't know what's getting ready to happen. Thank God for a savior who intercedes for you all the time, and he's releasing some words. He's always interceding and releasing some words. So I love to grab hold of the words that God is speaking over you. See, I I love it here that Jacob, we see Jacob here in Genesis 28. Could it be, could it be, could it be that Jacob was receiving some sight words? Could it be that Jacob was on his journey called life? Matter of fact, Jacob, to be honest, Jacob was a little bit of a schemer. We all know Jacob, had a, he had some tricks under his sleeve. Jacob wasn't all wrapped so tight. He, he always had some plans to try to get over. But thank God, Leah, even though Jacob was a trickster, God still had some words about Jacob. His words still was getting ready to send him in a direction. Can we relate to Jacob right now? We all did some things in our life. We all been, been like Jacob sometimes. Don't act all holy in here. I know you look kind of cute right now, but can I just preach to some people who know they ain't always get it right, who know they always wasn't serving God, who know they always didn't have God in their best interest, and thank God he did not go back on his words. Even when you don't get it right, my gosh, tell the enemy today, my God still got some words about me. Even when I make mistakes and I stumble and I trip, thank God that he still got some words for me. So Jacob here, and I love it that Jacob was on a journey. And I love it that Jacob received God, his words from God in a dream. It says that Jacob, because the sun was getting ready to set, Jacob decided in a certain place to stop and go to sleep. I love the fact that God spoke to Jacob right when time was running out. That he had no choice but to stop. He had no choice but to get in a position, even though it was a hard position, he still had to stop because he ran out on his time, but he didn't run out on God's time. That God would still speak to you even in a certain place. Come on, somebody. Even in a certain place, God would still speak a word to you. Even in a certain place where you don't feel as though you feel lonely, you feel frustrated, you don't know where you're getting ready to go. I love the fact, even though the sun was setting, but the true and deep sun was still on the throne. I love the fact that God was still speaking even in a certain place. See, I want to talk to you a little bit today, family, about certain words. You guys got me sweating up here. Come on, somebody. But I want to talk to you about sight words. I want to talk because here's what sight words do. They begin to open up your eyes to see clues in what God is already doing around you. The moment that we begin to look through the eyes of our own filter, we don't see the activity of what God is doing in your midst. See, in this series that we're preaching right now, we're preaching in this series about I am here in this season of learning how to maximize the now moment that you're in right now. We can easily get into a space in our life where we're always reaching for the next. We can easily get in a space in our life that we're always setting ourselves up to give our most energy to the next moment, the ambition for the next. It, 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 as even though we're I, I, like we're in a shopping, we're in Walmart or Target or wherever you go, and it's the top shelf, you're always reaching for the something higher. And here's what God has continued to whisper to me. And I'm going to continue to shout it to you. That God is saying, Anthony, as long as you keep trying to reach for the next, you will always miss what's in your now. That there's some things in your now right now that God is doing. And I love the fact that even though Jacob was on a journey somewhere, God began to speak about his now. God can speak to your now. I want to say this to you because God gave Jacob some sight words. What I want to tell you today, don't waste your sight words. Don't waste the words that God is speaking to you. 
Don't waste the words that, what are you doing with your sight words today? Oh, little old Princeton got to, he got to do some work during the week. Come on, somebody. He got to do some work. He said, Daddy, I'm struggling with my sight words. I said, son, when was the last time you went over your sight words? Well, actually, me, his father, supposed to sit down with him more, but I didn't want him to mess up my teaching moment. <laughs> it's, 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 we, but we're in this together, son. But he has to stay in a relationship with his father in order to prove his sight words of his vocabulary. So he said, Dad, I'm struggling with my sight words. I feel as though I don't know all of my sight words in this season. I want to, this is the words of a six-year-old, I want to get better at reading. So it comes through relationship with the father in order for his vocabulary to increase about what about his sight words that the teacher is giving him. All I'm saying to you right now, family, is that God has given you some sight words. How's your relationship with your father so that you can know the sight words for this specific quarter of your life? See, we can miss the sight words that God is saying to us. The teacher is showing up at class, but I just wonder, even for myself, it's the student there. It's the student beside the teacher because the teacher is teaching a lesson, but it's the student present in the class because if the student is present in the class, the student will understand the sight words that the teacher has. The teacher always has some sight words. Here's the powerfulness about sight words. Sight words create things. Sight words move things. Sight words gives you the ability to have an imagination about the very thing that you don't even see. That's the powerfulness and the beauty of words. That it creates an imagination that this imagination is just not a dream. It's actually God speaking through the dream. He will speak through your imagination. Just like when he formed the heavens and the earth, he didn't need nobody else to join in. He just had his words. And when his words goes forth, things begin to get in order. All I'm saying to you in this season of your life, and I'm talking to myself right now, are you using your sight words? Are you using your sight words to create? Are you using your sight words to begin to see the very thing that God is speaking over your life? How are you using your sight words? Because here's the beauty of this family. Here's what sight words does. See, sight words are determined. Sight words are determined. That's the first point. Watch this. Genesis 28 and 11. It says he reached a certain place. Come on, somebody. And he spent the night there because the sun had set. He took one of the stones from the place. He put it there at his head and he laid down in that place. I love the fact that Jacob was in a certain place and God still spoke to him in that place. Regardless of where you are right now, here this family, God can meet you in a certain place. Why? Because his words are determined to meet you right where you are. That despite what Jacob was going through, despite what Jacob has already did, I've loved the fact and being encouraged by this, that his words found him in a season of his life where he was laying on a hard place. He just came from comfortable. He just came from everything that he had. He just came from royalty. And now he finds himself all by himself laying and using a rock as a pillow. Talk about a hard place at a hard time. And I thank God that he still spoke to him and he gave him vision through his words. Here's what I'm saying to you right now. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I don't know. You may feel as though you're laying on a rock right now. You laying on a rock in your career. Come on, somebody. You land on a rock in your marriage. You land on a rock in that relationship. You land on a rock in your health condition. You are laying on a rock in your entrepreneur life. And here's what I'm telling you as a friend and a pastor. I'm telling you, God can speak to you while you're on that rock. Right on a rock, his words can meet you there. At nighttime, God can meet you there. At darkness, God can meet you there. At a time when you're all by yourself, I'm just telling you, God's words never fail. His words can meet you right where you are. Why? Because his sight words are determined. Not even Jacob Paz can stop these words from reaching him. 
There's nothing you can do to ever change the way God loves you. There's nothing you can do that can ever change the way that of how God feels about you. Tell that to the enemy today. Tell that to yourself today. Do not allow your past to separate you from God's love when God is saying, I already forgot about the past already, and I'm here to love you as you are and meet you right where you are. That's why we call it grace. Thank God that his grace never fails. Thank God that his grace will even meet me when my head is on a rock. His words are determined to meet you right where you are. I love that his words, hear this family, I love that his words determine my direction. That when he speaks, his words determine where I'm going. So even in this series, we're talking, we, we, we talked a little bit about, about Abraham a couple weeks ago. We talk right now, we're talking about Jacob, and we understand that they are on a what? Journey. And even when they felt lost, what came and guided them? God's words. So just because you don't see it, my question to you today, do you hear it? Do you hear it? Do you hear the voice? That's why I love Sundays coming in here worshiping. That's why I love doing the weeks. Why? Because I need to hear his words. I need his words when I'm, when I'm feeling a little bit cloudy, when I don't have the full vision. I need your words, God. I need your words to increase my faith. I need your words to increase what I'm going through. I need your words. There's something about his words. His words will always give you direction. You may not know what the full staircase may look like, but his word says he'll be with you in the next step. So as long as you understand where the next step is, he will always light a path to the next step. He will always take you to where? The next step. All I'm speaking to you today, let's make sure our next step woo, is our best step. And he will always give you the strength and the guidance to take your next step. Why? Because his words give direction. The other point I have is sight words are destined. Not only are his words determined to meet you, but his words are destined. Genesis 28, 13, watch this, family. It says, the Lord was standing there beside him saying, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, the God of Isaac. I will give you and your offspring the land on which you are lying. Your offspring will be like dust of the earth. And you were spread out towards the west and the east, the north and the south. All the people on the earth, my God, will be blessed through you and your offspring. Watch this. In the middle of nowhere, God speaks a word to Jacob about his future. In the middle of nowhere. I wrote this down in my notes. This, this blew my mind. In the middle of nowhere. In O. Where? Nowhere. When God speaks his words, he changes your nowhere into nowhere, K-N-O-W. I love when purpose comes into my life, that when God begins to speak his words, when I feel as though I'm on this journey called life, out in the middle of nowhere, his words can come into my life, and it begins to turn the nowhere into nowhere. In other words, K-N-O-W, I know where, I know who's here. And as long as the great I am is here, I don't matter. I may not feel as though where I don't know where I'm going, but I know that he's here. I know that he's with me. I know that he will always guide me. I am here, but guess who else is here? The great I am is here. The one and only that Alpha and Omega is here. The one that said he would never leave you or forsake you is always present with you. Around your family, he's present with you. Come on. On your job, he's present with you. On your way to work, he's present with you. When you're in the midst of that argument, come on, somebody, he's still with you. Come on, and, and in disagreement, he's always there with you. Even when we don't get it right, thank God that his words are always there with us. Because he said he would never leave us or forsake us. It's us that leave his presence, not him. It's us that withdraw from his presence, not him. His words, in other words, when I'm saying his words, I'm saying his promises. That his promises are always there with you. 
So when you're feeling that on a Wednesday that you don't understand God's words, hear that his promise is always with you. Receive his promise in the midst of darkness. Receive his promises in the memorization of being reminded of his words. Why? Because you are destined for greatness, my God. You are destined. You got to speak that over your life. This ain't a prosperity message. This is God's message. And God says this. He said that you're blessed. He said that you're an overcomer. Don't allow the enemy to speak other words over you that God has not spoken about you. Rebuke the words of the enemy today. Stop taking on what your family said about you. Rebuke the family curse today and receive God's words about your life. My family is blessed. Come on, somebody. My family will walk in wholeness. Come on, somebody. My family is an overcomer. Come on, somebody. You got to speak these words, not just over you, but speak it over your family. Just because your family tree may look a certain way, but thank God for the real tree. Thank God for the great I am because we're connected to another family tree. And that's the kingdom of God. Inside the kingdom of God, there's wholeness. Inside of the kingdom of God is prosperity. Inside of the kingdom of God is everything that you need. Thank God that he's speaking his words. Why? Because his words are destined. His words are determined to meet you right where you are. His words will go to the extent to meet you right where you are. You can look. I don't even have to go into your past right now. You know where God's words met you at. You know on a season of your life where we didn't get it right, where God's words did not stop. His words are not a, it doesn't know how to fail. It goes to the extent to meet you right where you are. That's the love of grace to meet you right where you are. So if you already got a track record with God, I'm here to tell you today to be reminded, keep pushing, keep moving, don't quit, keep pushing forward. Why? Because you're destined for greatness. That he's speaking a word over you and his words is connected to your destiny. God has a destination for each and every one of you. And what I love about this is that when Jacob was dreaming, God was right there. When Jacob was dreaming, he thought he was by himself. God was standing right there with him the whole time. What I'm saying to you right now, you may feel as though you may be lonely. You may feel that you're by yourself in this. Come on, somebody. In this journey called life, or you will feel that you're by yourself in some things. But thank God that his word is always there with you. Thank God that his word is right there to cover you and comfort you. Thank God that when you're on, when you're on, on your job and you got an assignment and you, don't, you maybe you don't even know what you're doing. Thank God that his words is right there encouraging you. The great coach he is. You can do this, my sister. You can do this, my brother. Keep pushing. Don't quit. Don't give up. I know you're closer than you ever been before. Thank God that his words keep pushing you and it won't allow you to quit. His words will encourage you to keep going. Yeah, yeah. The next one, sight words are dependable. Not, not, not only are sight words determined, not only are sight words connected to my destiny, but I love the fact that his words are dependable. I thank God that I can, I can we, we all can, we can lean on his words. Because watch this, Genesis 28, 15. He said, look, I am what? With you. And I will watch over you wherever you will go. I will. Look at God. Listen to God. I love all of the eyes in this sentence. I just love reading a word. And, and I thank God it's not Jacob speaking. I thank God that it's God speaking. Because if it was Jacob speaking with a whole bunch of eyes, I don't want to live like that. But thank God when he speaks, he sent I. 
I'm going to do this. I'm the one that's going to come forth. I'm the one that's going to cover you. I'm the one that's going to make it happen. Let's, can we live a life where our eyes are put in a background and his eyes is put in front? Can we live a life of making sure that God's word is in the front of us? God, whatever you want to do, be God in our life. We'll make space for you to be God in here. We'll create space for you to do what only you can do. God is saying, can I do this in your life? Why? Because I am with you. Hey, Chaney, he looked up, opened his eyes, he looked up, and he saw the staircase. And the whole time, he, he had no idea that he really wasn't by himself the whole time. The reality of his eyes began to trick the reality of what the spiritual realm was right next to him. The reality, hear that, family, don't let your natural eyes trick you in what God is already doing in your life. That's why we don't look through natural eyes. We look through our spiritual eyes. That comes through a relationship with God. Because when we can't see it, thank God we will always hear it. And when God began to speak, the dream connected to the reality of the spiritual realm, he began to see, wow, God, you're really here. Wow, 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 wow God, on this journey called life, you're really here. What, what, having a wow, my wow, God. Raising these kids. Come on, somebody. When, when, when we don't know how to get it right. Wow, God, you're, you're, you're really here. And, and our marriage, when sometimes we have disagreements and we don't know if we're going to make it. Wow, God, you're really, you're really here. On this path of this entrepreneur or in your career, and maybe you went to college and you got a degree and you're not even doing that, and now you're really confused. Thank God. Come on, somebody. Thank God that he's still Wow, he's still here. Open your eyes and see the beauty that God is still with you. He looked up and he was able to depend on the words that God was speaking to him. See, I love this. In Proverbs 3, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own understanding. I love it in the other translation. It said, do not, it said, it said don't, don't, don't lean on your understanding. Don't lean on, on those ways. Don't lean on, on those wisdom. My question to you right now, because God's words are dependable, what are you leaning on in this season of your life? What, if you're not leaning on the words of God, the very thing that you're leaning on always has a life shelf. It can only withstand you leaning on it for so long. Eventually, it's going to get tired. Eventually, it's going to wear out. Eventually, it's going to run out of that power. And can I say it this way? Willpower eventually runs out. Oh, yeah, it does. Willpower will eventually runs out. That's why I don't want to make sure I always have willpower. I want to make sure. Can I teach you this a little bit? I want to make sure I have why power. Not just willpower, because willpower will eventually run out. We always got, we got grit, we got ambition. Come on, we all got some willpower. But I want to make sure I have why power. What's why power? Understanding the why in your life. Your why is connected to God. God will give you purpose. You connect that purpose back to your why. So when you're confused, when you're frustrated, you don't run off the fumes of willpower. Baby, you run off the fumes of why power, and your why is found in Jesus Christ. The purpose, the calling that's on your life. Don't quit. Have why power. God, you called me to this. Even when it don't look right, why power? He said, he said it this way. He said, seek me, trust me, and love me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your, come on, and every strength, and everything that you do, give your all. That's not willpower. That's why power. When I connect my heart back to him, it's connected to the why. It's connected to the source. It's connected to the great I am. So as long as I'm connected to the source, I'm connecting my why back to the source. So when willpower can't do what it do, thank God that the why power will always show up. Why power? What's the why in your life? What's the why right now? If you got a sense, you can write it down. What's the why in your life? 
And here's the beauty of it. If you don't know it right now, get close to the Father because he wants to share it with you. Each and every one of us in here has greatness, is designed to be great, to do great things for the kingdom of God. That calling, the purpose that's on your life. You are designed to do greatness. Don't allow your willpower to run out. Because why? You're not leaning on that. You're leaning on why power. So I asked the question early, stop leaning. What are you leaning on? Lean on him. Lean on him. Lean on him. Yeah, I can invite you back up, Marquise. Lean, lean on him. Lean on him when you're struggling. Lean on him when you don't have clarity. Lean on him when you don't know what your next will look like. Lean on him when there's frustration. But even when I say to this, those are all the meanest things. Lean on him when everything is still going great. Lean on him when you're on your mountaintop. Come on, somebody. Lean on, don't, 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 don't tap back into the willpower. Stay connected to the source. Even though things are going great, to know where your power is coming from, know where your why is connected, stay connected to him and lean on him. And lean on him. As I get ready to close, I wanted to share this with you because in Genesis 28, 16, I love this six and said, when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he said, surely, come on, somebody, surely the Lord is in this place. Woo. And I did not know it. I think that's somebody's testimony right now. I, I, I think somebody's eyes are, are just opening up in a season of their life right now. Surely I did not see it. But I see it now. Come on, somebody. You ever been in a space? Oh, I just want to preach this thing real right now. I, I, because you can be in a space of your life and the revelation from heaven can open your eyes to a degree where you have to step back and say, my God, you were here the whole time and I didn't even see it. And I thank God when I didn't see it, he didn't leave. I thank God when I didn't catch it, my gosh. He didn't walk away. He didn't judge me. He didn't condemn me. Come on, somebody. But he stayed right there as a father would until you get it, son. I'll stay here. I'll speak to you. I'll talk to you. Even if you don't get it right now, I know you're going to get it. I know it's going to come. Oh, somebody talk back to me in here. You may not see it. You may not understand it. But grace stays right there and it speaks to you until you catch it that it's right here. It may not be going according to your equation, my gosh, but it's right there. It may, you didn't create this plan. You didn't create this journey, but it's still right there. You may not understand the past of your next step in this life that you didn't know in this season of your life. I didn't know I would be right here. Jacob didn't know that he was going to be in a certain place at a certain time, but thank God that a God by the name of God, Heavenly O Father, showed up. Jehelahim showed up right in the midst. Thank God that Jehovah Jireh showed up to be the very thing that he needed. He might have been in a certain place, but a certain God showed up. And all I'm telling you right now, you may feel as though you're in a certain season. He don't even have a name. You don't know what you're going through. But a certain God will show up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all gonna make me lose my voice. Because I want, I want you to understand this as we get ready to close. That this man of God, he left comfort and he went on a journey that God called him to. Despite him being a trickster, we understand that. But this path was designed that God wanted to lead him on, to speak to him. He would have never wrestled with God chapters later if he didn't step out in this direction. He would have never had an encounter, my gosh. Woo. He would have never had an encounter with God if he never stepped out in obedience. Esau went in a different direction 
but Jacob chose the right direction. Why? Because his father told him something and he heard what his father said. He said, go to the land of Lebanon. All I'm telling you right now, you may not understand your journey, but your father has given you some words and all you got to do in this season is obey and say yes. I hear your words. I don't understand it, but I say yes. I don't know where I'm going. I don't understand right here, but I say yes. If I can just give you my yes, I don't know what you're getting ready to do, but I know your word says those who are diligently and fruitful and will be rewarded for what you're doing in our life. So don't grow weary. Stay right there with him. Don't grow weary. Stay right there with him. My gosh. And then he, he goes right here. Watch this. He said, what an awesome place this is. <laughs> Man, a guy was laying on a rock. <laughs> what an awesome place. The condition was hard, but the presence was gracious. The condition was hard, but his presence overwhelmed the condition of the hardness that he was experiencing. So regardless of what it may feel like, when his presence shows up, it can take your mind off of the condition. And his grace can actually elevate you to experience a new level in him. But watch this. He said, this is none other than a house of God. This is the gate of heaven. This is the gate of heaven. We can all stand to our feet. This is the gate of heaven. Watch this. Watch this. This is right where Jacob was standing. We're really sitting, laying. <laughs> he said, this is the gate of heaven. In other words, Jacob caught a revelation that now he understands that he has access to heaven. Right in a hard place, Jacob caught a revelation that he said, you know what, even though my condition is hard, I still have access to heaven. I'm standing by a gate. Come on, somebody. I'm standing right here by a gate. I can see the ladder going up and down. I can see the messengers going up and down. I understand that despite where I am right now, I have access to heaven. See, here's the beauty of what we have that Jacob did not have. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for Jesus Christ that he died on the cross and now he's seated in heaven and he has given us authority and dominion and the Holy Spirit is right here to not just comfort us but also give us access to heaven. You are sitting right by the gate. Yeah. You're right by the gate of heaven. When you are connected to Jesus Christ, he is the door. He said, I am the door. I am the way. I am the one. I'm standing right by the gate. There's no other way to go. I am the one who sit by the gate. I am the doorkeeper. I am the one who lets people in. Jesus is the doorkeeper. When you are in a relationship with Jesus Christ, hear this family, you have access to heaven. Whatever you need, he said it this way. Come on. Whatever you ask in my name. I'll do. Whatever, why? Because I'm the door. I'm the door. I'm the door. You need your faith increase? I'm the door. You, 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 need, you need your health? I'm the door. Come on, come on. You, you, need, you need God to repair what you're going through in your mind? I'm the door. You don't understand this journey? Jesus saying, I'm the door. You are standing right by the gate and you're not walking through the door. God is saying, how will we go another day without stepping through the door and receiving everything that you need? Open up your mouth and say, Jesus, thank you for the door. Thank you for the door. In a certain place, in this spot, in this season, somebody needs to receive this right now. In a certain spot, in this spot, in this season, I am near the gate. 
I'm near the gate. I'm not far from the gate. I'm near the gate. Don't allow your conditions to determine your accessibility to the gate. His word said it this way. He said, I did not come to condemn you. I came to give you life. In other words, I came to give you access to heaven where all life comes from. So regardless of what you may be going through right now, you have access to the gate. Can I say this? Well, you got the code to the gate. Come on, somebody. Or you got to tell yourself that during the week. Well, I got the code to the gate. I got it. When, when I need to tap in, I got the code to the gate. When, when, I, when I'm running low on certain things, I got the code to the gate. And inside of that gate is everything that I need. Inside of that gate is everything my family needs. Inside of that gate is where vision comes from. Inside of that gate is where I get my purpose. Inside of that gate is where I get my understanding of my calling. God has called me to some great things. God has called me to touch some things. I've been called to release some words and talk to some things in this season of my life. This ain't a future word. This a now word. God wants to do something right now even for this church God wants to do something right now even in a movie theater even online God wants to do something right now and God is saying use my words use my words at it I've given you some words stop using your own words use my words use my scripture use, use, use my words Release my words at and watch and see what it do. Not your words, my words. Why? Because you are at the gate. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. We thank you for this word. That understanding that through your words is everything that we need. We stand at the gate even right now, Lord God. And we simply say thank you. Thank you that your words keeps us determined on the journey. Thank you that your words connects us to our destiny. Thank you that your words are right here that we can depend on. We lean on your words right now. For every hand, for, for everybody that's present right now and even online, we simply even pray right now. Let your words rest on them. Let it rest on their hearts. Let it rest on their minds. Let it begin to stir up a new level of faith, a new level of vision, a new level to run after your words, to chase after you. Your word says that we will seek you, God. We will run after you. We will have a pursuit after you. And we will seek your kingdom and your righteousness. In other way, your ways. And your word says that everything that else will be added. We don't run after the ad we run after you. Let us run after you. We pray. We thank you. Increase us in this moment. And before we shift from this place, or we head that's still bowed, our eyes are closed. Maybe may we, we talked about the gate of heaven. That Jesus Christ is the gate. There is no access to heaven except through Jesus Christ. That the greatest decision that we will ever make is to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That through this relationship is only established to the Father is through Jesus Christ. So maybe you're in a season of your life where you never made that decision. Maybe you're in a season of your life where God is calling you back to the gate. A rededication that is calling you right back to be rededicated back to him if that's you I just want to know who I'm praying for you can just begin to stretch up your hands we want to pray for you that God is calling you back to his gate I want you to simply just repeat these words I'll always love to say the simple but powerful come on somebody words not only are these words we're confessing and we're believing in Jesus Christ. Repeat these words. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We confess with our mouth. We believe in our heart that Jesus 
is my Lord and Savior. I repent that I am a sinner. I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I commit my life to you. Lead me, guide me all the days of my life. I'm seated in heavenly places. Come on, if you believe that, somebody shout amen. Amen, 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 amen. As we get ready to go back into worship, I've always wanted to invite you to the Connect card. Our family always talks about the Connect card. Hey, if you just made that decision for your life, we got an incredible team here that would love to connect with you, pray with you, but hear this family and walk that next step with you. So if you're in person, even online, you can definitely click on the chat box. There's a link right there. Hey, hear this. You don't, we don't want you to do life by yourself. Why? Because his words are right there with you. But he's forming family around you as well. Let us connect with you. Your next best step is in this season. As we continue in this posture of worship, when we bring our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings, everything changes when we lean into you. He is our source, our Jehovah Jireh, and we get to use the good words that he gave us. When he blesses us with our increase, we get to speak back to that seed and tell it to go and grow and multiply and that we'll see it again. We have the power of our words to say every seed sown after its kind will reproduce in the same manner. And so as we give our offering today, uh, you can text it, you can give right here in the sanctuary, um, online, uh, you can uh, use our secure link and know that Jehovah Jireh, our provider, not only gives to us to be a blessing, but he loves us so much that everything that he gives comes with abundance because he's a big, big, abundant God. And so as we give today, think about how he has blessed you and how we can be a blessing to others. Let us pray over our seed. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you provide so abundantly for us and not just because you love us and you want what's best for us, but so that we can then pour out and be a blessing to others. Father God, we thank you for the privilege to support your kingdom with the giving of our tithes and offerings. And so bless it, Father God. Bless the seed, bless the giver. Bless this ministry and all that it is able to do because of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ladies, 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 can you say sisterhood? Oh, come on, you can say it better than that. I got my corner right here. Say sisterhood. Woo! We are so excited to be able to get together this Saturday, May 21st at 11 a.m. for our sisterhood brunch. Woo woo! And you know what is even better than brunch with sisterhood with our sisters? Brunch with our sisters and no children, right? <laughs> There is child care available uh, for just $10. Now, go on care.com. You're not going to find a better price than that. Um, so if you have to bring your little blessings with you, that's fine. We have the ability to take care of those. So if you've not gone online and registered, do so now. We don't want you to miss out. It's going to be an amazing time. Sisterhood brunch. I didn't get invited. I don't know how I feel about that. Hey, this next announcement, uh, I'm going to need a little crowd participation, all right? So I need everybody to repeat after me. What is Serve Sunday? What's Serve Sunday? So glad y'all asked me. So when I think about serving, right, you think about Jesus serving his disciples, washing the feet, right? That's service. That's what service looks like to the believer. So two weeks on May 29th, we will be having Serve Sunday. Everybody, please clap that up. Serve Sunday, please. There we go. So we don't want to... We don't want to just be a church in the community, but we want to be the church in our community. And that's what we're going to do. In two weeks, we're going to partner up with Be The Good Project, and church is where we are. So church may not be here, so church will be there serving the people in our community. That is May 29th in two weeks. Um, register, all right? I expect everybody to go register, and I hope we have to deny people because we want to serve. So go online, sign up to serve, 
If serving is not your thing, it's okay. There's other ways you can serve by donating, all right, because there are going to be supplies and we're making sandwiches and non-perishables. So if you can't serve, we would absolutely love for you to donate, all right? Serving is what we do as believers, and we are so happy as a church to be given an opportunity to serve, all right? Two weeks, serve Sunday. Everybody said it, all right? Serve is one of those sight words Pastor Anthony was talking about. <laughs> Getting back to the basics. You see serve, and it's like, oh, May 29th. So it's whatever you want you to think, all right? Uh, before I pray this out, I would like to invite Pastor Anthony back up for just a second. Hey, hey guys, we're going to make this real quick. Can you guys do me a big, come on, can we just put our hands together for Pat? Come on, Marquise, come on up here, bro. Come on. Come on, stand, stand right here in, in, in between us, man. But uh, definitely, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it quick, but uh, I know we kind of dripped the announcement a couple weeks ago, but can we put our hands together? Come on, this is our new worship pastor. Come on, family. Come on. Oh, we can do better than that. Come on, we're family. There we go. Hey, hey, we, we, I'm, I'm telling you guys, uh, as you already know, but you're going to just be getting ready to know even more, uh, just the calling, the purpose, the gift that, that God has given this, this man of God. Uh, and we're, we're so, we have been blessed, but I just even believe as we cross over these waters, we're getting ready to get even more blessed uh, for what God is getting ready to do. And then we just want to acknowledge you, but also pray for, pray over you as you step into this season, anytime you give God your yes uh, for assignment that God has put you on, uh, we want to cover and soak that in prayer. So is that okay, family? I know we, a couple more minutes, but we want to, we want to introduce and we just want to soak it. Um, so, so Pastor Brent, if you can just open the oil, come, we got some oil you today and we just want to cover it. Our good friend, if you can just anoint his head and um, as you guys can just begin to stretch your hands towards Marquise, um, and even in this moment right now, uh, Father God, we, we honor you, we love you, and we thank you for your son, Marquise. Uh, we thank you for the purpose that you have designed and created him. Um, even as the, the word that's even on this house, Lord God, I, I even sense it even more even right now, the, the spirit of David. Um, even in your left hand, you will, you will be able to, to play a harp, play an instrument. But even in your right hand would be a hand of warfare. And we thank you for that you can be able to do both in this season, Lord God. That you're not, on, uh, you're not in opportunity lane, but you're in an assignment right now. That this is an assignment, a calling, a purpose. And even as the word went forth today, in that season when David, when God spoke to David in a cave, when he came out of that cave, he did miraculous things for God. And I thank you for the path that God has called you on, Marquise. And I thank you and we, we acknowledge God. So we even pray right now, Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. As you called him out of, even out of the cave right now to exposure to even more, Lord God. Let him begin to play his instruments, but his instruments will be worship, but his worship will also be warfare, Lord God. And we thank you as his words begin to go forth, Lord God, as he's leading and pastoring and building teams, Lord God, that this is centered on a foundation of Jesus Christ, Lord God. That you will strengthen his hands that even in this season, Lord God, strengthen his mind, begin to unclear his ears even right now. We speak to all of the gates over his body even right now, his eyes, his ears, his mouth, Lord God, that this will be centered in a refreshed fire even right now, Lord God. We stir up the gifts that you're activating even more right now. Let them see at a new level, a higher level, Lord God, that your voice is much clearer in this season, Lord God, that every step that he takes, Lord God, is being stepped in the direction that you have called him to go, Lord God that you will cover him, that you will be with him, but you will be the very thing that he needs in this season. We even speak to seasons of loneliness, even right now. Anytime you give your yes, you can feel lonely. But God wants you to know, Marquis, that he's with you. He will always be with you. His words say he will never forsake you or lead you. But understand this, God is also saying that the bridge that you're crossing, there's an army behind you. There's more people that's coming with you. And God is taking you somewhere that they haven't gone yet. But he trusts you. He, he loves you. And he's using you in this season to cross waters that other people will not cross, Lord God. Trust him in this season. 
Trust the voice of God in this season as you lead in worship, but you lead from the spirit of truth and worship. And we thank you in Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody shout amen, 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 amen. Amen. Appreciate that so much, God. Hey, hey, we love you guys so much. Can we just do the benediction? Father God, we love you. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he shine his face on you. Let him give you grace and peace throughout all of your relationships. We love you. It's in Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for worshiping with it. We love you guys.